In today's video I want to take a look at some lesser known input types out there that should, you should probably know about. So leaving aside the text and the file, the hidden, the number and the submit and the button input types, we're going to take a look at some very interesting ones. For example, we have the input type color that we can have here and if I refresh the page, you're going to notice that the input is just a button that you click and it opens up an actual uh, color palette that you can select a color from. So let's say we select here uh, this color, sure, looks nice. And if I submit it, we're going to notice that down here we do get in fact an, uh, a color specifier with the hashtag and hexadecimal values for colors. That's a quick and easy way to select a color if you want to so that you don't have to uh, import another library for your simple color palette that's already in the browser. Now, that is to say that the browser does implement a nice color wheel because maybe not all the browsers are implementing this in a nice way and you're going to have different implementations on different browsers. Another input type I see time and time again overlooked by people that want to implement a simple date input is, well, the date type. So if I have here a date type and if I refresh the page, you're going to notice that I have a very simple date picker that I can just click on and it's it's usable. It, it works. It, you can actually go back in time or let's see 2019, let's go February 13 and if we submit it, it's going to work properly. It is of course going to return to you a date that is formatted in this way. And uh, you can also, you cannot change the format, but you can also specify the minimum and the maximum to them. So to do so, of course, you can just say uh, min equals, let's say 2020-0101. And if you do so and refresh the page, of course, we're gonna get that as the minimum. So I cannot no longer go back to the 2019. A very similar one is the date time local. So date time local is, um, an input type that gives you both date and time and it is named date time local because it does return to you a local uh, date time so on the current time zone that you're in or the time zone of the operating system or the browser. So if I try to select it here you're gonna notice that the <laughs> date time picker is much larger than I actually expected but you can select the date so I can go here 2019 18 and let's say at 8 uh, zero, zero a.m. and that's gonna submit and I'm gonna see it here inside the network tab as being formatted as an ISO date time which is very nice. Now you might notice that the min attribute doesn't work anymore that's because you also have to specify the time so I'm gonna have to specify here t let's say zero, 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 zero. and now if I try to refresh this we shouldn't be able to select the date from uh, 2019 or earlier and that is the case I can no longer scroll up any long anymore okay but what if you just want the time well if you want just the time instead of the instead of both the date and the time you can just specify here the input type time and uh, that itself also has a minimum and maximum if I remove the minimum for now and uh, take a look at how this looks it's very straightforward it just has the hour, the minutes, and the either PM or AM. So you can specify it here and submit it and it's going to be formatted like so in the post request. Very straightforward. Now again, all of these are uh, implemented probably differently on every browser. And if you want to select a week, you can also do so by using the week input type. And that's going to be just a simple week input time that's gonna give you uh, a way to select a week of the year. It's nice that it, it does tell you the week inside the year and then it does select which week you want here. And if you're gonna select it and uh, submit it in the post request it's gonna look just like so. And the last date time related input type is month. So we can change this to month so that we are clear on all of them and of course we can just select a month from this place on, let's say July 2021 and if I submit of course I'm gonna get here in the request 2031-07 so that's how this is sent and again you cannot change the format but you can you can change uh, the interval that you're allowed to select into. Now moving away from the daytime related uh, input types there's also the search input time which you should probably use whenever you have a search bar on your website this is more known but I guess I should really talk about it a bit 
uh, the, the thing about this one is that it works nicely with mobile versions of browsers. So the browsers know how to integrate them uh, whenever you're trying to search something. Another one is the telephone input type. If you ever need to type in a telephone number in a form, it's nice to use this because on mobile version of browsers, it's going to give you a nice keypad for typing in the telephone. Although it is not validated in any way, shape or form, you're gonna probably have to give it a pattern. Here I have the pattern from uh, MDN that they are recommending to use for whatever uh, country this is for. If I try to refresh it now, I shouldn't be able to, well, I, I am able to just type in letters, but I shouldn't be able to submit because of course I need to specify the proper format, which is three digits and then three digits and then four digits. And if I submit this, it's gonna allow me to submit it. And of course it's gonna be, well, uh, that as sent as a text, no, no special formatting, no nothing. It's just, uh, it's just a way to tell the, the browsers what they are dealing with. Is it a text? Is it a telephone uh, field? It's a nice, it's a nice addition. And lastly, it's the URL type. Now the input type URL doesn't really validate much of uh, this URL. It only does is simply check if uh, the text you're entering here has the scheme and then has the colon slash slash and then has something else after it. So for example, if I say here test.com, it's not gonna work because it expects, it expects me to type in either HTTP or HTTPS at the beginning. And now if it is like this, I can submit and it works. So here you should actually provide a proper pattern to validate against and of course validate it in the backend. Now this is nice in some cases because uh, this input type, like many others, do tell the browsers what keyboard should be displayed. Right. Sometimes you may have seen that your mobile keyboard, whenever you're trying to type something, sometimes it has a .com in the bottom right corner, probably. And it is because of this input type URL. Otherwise, you might not uh, have that keyboard. You have to type in .com, uh, for example. And lastly, there's a date time type for the inputs, but this one is actually obsolete and you should not use it anymore. The daytime local is the one that you should now use from now on. So keep in mind that if you see any example with the input type date time, then that's obsolete. So you should change it. And that's it for today. I hope you got something out of this video. If you do have any questions, leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. The source code can be found on our website. As usual, link in the description below. Take care. Bye.